and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. Well, we're in our new space now, and I have to say I like it. Today's episode is a follow-along to another video, which, if you haven't watched yet, it's on our other channel, the Bacon RPG channel. And uh, this video contains strong language, so please be advised that uh, if you are sensitive to it, you probably shouldn't watch the video. And why is that, you ask? Well, because this video asks the very serious question, are you a GM dick? So, let's unpack. The players can really frustrate you as a GM, and a bad player in a group can cause the group to lose cohesion and fall apart. But a bad GM will destroy a group regardless of the situation. And oftentimes that happens not because of the GM's inexperience, but because the GM is just a dick. The first kind of dick. The no GM dick. My character tries to edge around the corner of the cliff. No. Can't do it. Okay. My character ties a rope and tries to swing over the edge of the cliff. No, there's nothing to tie the rope onto. Okay. My character tries to use local wood to make a bridge across. No, there's no wood. What do you want the player to do? Yes, you might be some genius who's worked out this amazing way of overcoming that little problem that you put in front of your players. But if you say no to every single attempt that they come up with, because they haven't come up with that one sacred little idea that you've come up with, you're a GM no dick. And it doesn't make sense. Why are you playing? If you've only got one bloody solution, write it into a book. Let them read the book and then they can move on. So do not just flatly deny the players any solutions because it doesn't fit with what you solved it as. Listen to them, understand what they're saying, and then let them move forward. Don't just say, no, 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 no. You haven't tried my idea because I'm the one who's the genius here. Your players are trying to solve the problem. Don't shut them down all the time. The next kind of GM dick is the yes GM dick. I uh, lash my whip around the chandelier, take a running leap, sail through the air, cut off four guards' heads and land on the other side and that's my action. Yeah, okay, okay, no, that's fine. Yes, no, that's, that's fine. I uh, set myself on fire and run through the streets naked, screaming ooda lally, and I don't take any damage because I'm a barbarian and I've got damage reduction. Oh no, yes, that's, that's absolutely fine. Yes, yes. I rip open the chest with my bare hands because the lock is old and ruined and uh, I get whatever's inside. Yes, yes, no, that's fine. Do you see what I'm saying here? The GM is responsible for making the game interesting and for making the game work. If you are just saying yes to everything that the players are doing, there is no opposition to them whatsoever. If you are so intimidated by your players that you just want to say yes to them all the time, you are a yes dick. Just go away. Stop playing the game because you're ruining it for everybody who's got a brain. The yes and no GMs are the denizens of the GM world. Because you don't know when to say yes, and you don't know when to say no, and you possibly don't know how to say either of them. So that kind of puts you in the maybe space, and nobody likes fence sitters. Nobody. That brings us to the rules GM, my personal pet hate. The rules GM is the GM who goes, oh, you, you want to jump across the, the cliff. Okay, uh, I've got a table for that, and I'll add that, and I'll add that, and there's a wind blowing, so I'll add that, and there's a this, so I'll add that, uh, so you cannot possibly make the roll, or yes, roll the dice, okay, good, you didn't score a natural 30 on a 20-sided dice, so I'm afraid that you fail. Yeah, yeah, because so, the rules say you can't do that. Yeah, no, sorry, you can't, you can't swing. No, the rules just say no. The rules say no. Who's running the bloody game? Is it you or is it the rules? If it's the rules, put the book in front of everybody and let it run the game. It'll probably do a better job than you. Rules GMs who get bogged down in, no, you can't do that because the rules say so. No, you can't do that because the rules say so. In other words, GMs who just lock the story down because the rules say so are not GMs, they're not game masters. They're just running a game according to the rules. That means you could be replaced by a computer or a parrot and nobody would know the difference. Now, 
Before you misinterpret me, we do as GMs need to understand the rules so that we can use them and work with them to make the story unfold. Not to link, constrain, just do that with the story and with the players. Nobody right likes a rules lawyer uh, player. Nobody likes a rules lawyer GM either. You get boring. Oh, you're trudging across the environment. Well, it says every hour we need to make a check. And you're trudging for 20 hours, so I'm just going to make 20 checks here. Let me go and sit and play with myself in the corner while I try and work out what kind of encounter you're going to have. Not that it has anything to do with the story, but a table says I should do it, so I'm going to do it. Rules, GMs, beware. I eat you. The vindictive GM. I am sometimes a vindictive GM dick. If you try and screw with me as a player, if you try and force me to do something that I don't want to do, if you try and really make sure that you're just driving those rules home for me all the time, I will become vindictive. I will single you out and I will make your character pay on your behalf. This is a bad trait for a GM to have and it makes you a dick. Do not single out players because you don't like them, because you don't like their character, because you don't like the sound of their voice. If you are that kind of petty person, you shouldn't invite yourself to the table. They can't help it. They're human beings. You need to interface with them, and if you don't like them, you need to have the guts to stand up and say, hey, please don't come to my table next week because I just have a personal hatred for you and can't control my inner emotions because I'm that kind of dick. The vindictive GM is a GM that's just going to frustrate Everybody, because the rest of the players are going, why is he punishing that player all the time? Why is she making that player make rolls all the time and the rest of us just walk through? It doesn't make sense. We can't plan for anything because it's always going to happen to that poor character because the GM is a vindictive dick. Don't be a vindictive dick. Bad. Spread the evil to all your players. That's a good GM. The GM who has a partner at the table, and so no, Snookums, you're okay. No, re-roll that. No, no one saw that dice. I saw what you rolled, player number two. Your dice is sitting, you, that's exactly what you're taking home, but you're okay. Oh, magical items? Well, there's this nice, sexy chainmail just for you, and you get some gold coins, and you get some gold coins, and you get nothing. If your partner is playing in the game, and you are favoritizing them, if you are making them a favorite and giving them advantages and ignoring things that they're doing that are particularly stupid or when they make a stu stupid decision or a move, you go, do you really want to do that? I think you can just think, just, just, just take a break. Just, I, I, if you are that kind of GM, then you should take your partner and go and play with them on their own. Trust me, you'll have more fun than the rest of your players sitting there going, how else is he going to make her live longer? Oh look, he's just given her all the treasure because we don't exist. Hello, why are we here? If it's just the two of you, get a room. It's just as bad as the player who brings their significant other to the table and the two of them just make this one little sick sucking sound on the side. It's just as bad as the GM is doing it to the person that they are playing with. Don't do it. If you can't control your hormones whilst the person's at the table and you can't treat them like another player, separate group, Go and have fun. S main group, have fun. Keep it separate if you can't keep it separate. The, it's my story and you are going to sit there and listen because I'm going to speak for 400 hours giving you my perfect descriptions of everything and you're just going to have to sucker through it. And when you say something that I feel doesn't fit with the script of my story, I'm going to re-say what you've said, but in my own words and in my own way. Or if you say something that I don't particularly like, I'm just going to railroad it straight through onto my own story. If you're that kind of dick of... I am presenting a story and you must listen to me and you don't let your other players, well, you don't let your players contribute to that story. Why are you playing with them? Go and write a book. That's what all the sensible ones do. If you try and force people to listen to you because you think the sound of your own voice is absolutely brilliant, you're a dick who should be on your own anyway. Nobody likes to listen to any one particular person around the table for longer than 10 minutes. Trust me. Don't hog the limelight. You are there to provide enjoyment 
for three, four, five, one, doesn't matter. Players who come to participate in the game, not to listen to you give a command performance of the, G the villain's speech or whatever the case might be. As a GM, your job is to do a whole bunch of things, but one of them is not provide a one and a half hour speech or performance recital. If you really want to do that, become an actor and go and join the stage. And that way, whilst you're being a waiter, you can think about why you were a dick GM. The, oh, I know we were going to play that campaign again tonight, guys, but I'm bored with that. Can't we run something else? Can't we go and do something? If the campaign is boring to you as the GM, what the hell is it to the poor players who've been struggling through your clearly dull narrative? GMs who get bored of the campaign, GMs who get, oh, well, why don't we try that system? Oh, no, 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 no. Why don't we try that system? Oh, I know we played for a week last week, but do you really like your characters? I don't like your characters. Why? Why are your players then wasting their lives entertaining you because you can't decide on how to tell a good story? A system only gets boring because you've let it get boring. That means you are a boring person. Now, before you go anywhere, I used to suffer from that. I would get bored with the campaign because I'd be sitting going, that's such a cool idea, I can run that campaign. Oh. It's kind of cool, but other than that, cooler. Isn't that cooler? Oh, I'm going to do that one. My players hated it, and they called me a dick all... Oh, really? We're changing campaigns again? Really? Can't we just choose one and stick to it? No, because I was a freaking dick. Don't be like me. Run a solid campaign, and if you get bored, find your own inspiration to make it more interesting because if you're getting bored your players are probably going to get bored too which means that you as a gm have failed don't do that don't get bored in your own campaign and if you are getting bored in your own campaign well maybe it's time to hang up that mantle of gm and hand it over to one of your players who may just be more qualified finally and this is a pet peeve of mine is the gm who's telling a story and running a campaign and then suddenly you go, but hang on, that doesn't make sense. How did that go from there to there? This is not 1984. We're not watching He-Man and the Masters of the Universe where there were plot holes the size of episodes. If your story doesn't make sense and a player goes, well, hang on a moment, you said this last week, now this week this is what's happening, and then a week later you're saying that that's happening, but that doesn't link to this or to that, it just doesn't make sense. How does this story work and you've got no answer, there's no second layer to your narrative that's going to be revealed in the next plot because you haven't thought about it, because you just don't make good stories, because you haven't followed the idea that someone wants something bad and is having difficulty getting it, and your story is just someone wants something, and then you go, oh, and they want that because I didn't have a plan. That's terrible. It means your players have invested so much time in your game and they've been trying to solve all of those problems that you've been throwing at them and they've got this list of clues that they've been diligently writing down and chatting to and playing their little hearts out and you haven't figured it out. You are the worst kind of GM that there is on the planet because it means that you have wasted everybody's time because you couldn't be bothered to follow a few simple narrative rules. And that's the worst kind of GM dick. And I said I wasn't going to get angry. Well, there we go. Bad GMs make the whole game bad. You can have a table of fantastic players sitting there ready to go. And because you're a no dick or you've got your personal love interest sitting at the table and you're trying to impress them or you just want a stage on which to perform, you will ruin that game and the people sitting around it will walk away going, I never ever want to play this game again because that's the kind of dick that sits at the head of it and runs it like a complete dictator or a complete moron. I don't want to play this game anymore. A bad player, on the other hand, the rest of the players go, well, that player was a complete dick. What a moron. I'm not going to play with him again, but I'll carry on playing the game. So a bad GM ruins the game in perpetuity. And it's really not difficult to get it right. You can make mistakes, you can fudge numbers, you can make the wrong call. 
But if you have the honorable core inside of you to be able to stand back and say, guys, listen, I made a mistake. That shouldn't have happened last week, but it did. So can we agree that this is now how we're going to move forward? And then you move forward. You learn from your mistakes. You adapt. If you're stuck with the rules and you don't want to move away from them because you're afraid you're going to make the wrong call, you're going to ruin your game. You have to have faith in your own capacity to tell a story, to engage people and not f be concerned with what your players are going. Wow, he doesn't know the rules. Oh, look at her. She tells terrible stories because remember last week she did the one about the dog down the well and this week she's doing another one. They're all so plodding. Yes. You need to make those plotting games, but at least they move forward and you need to step back and say, it was so plotting, it was so dull, but I've learned and I've moved forward and I'm getting better and I'm not frustrating my players by just blindly following what I believe to be right. So don't be a GM dick. Learn from your mistakes let things fly and make sure that everyone at your table is having fun and it's not just you who's at center stage. Rant over. So hit that like button if you feel that I've described a GM that you've come across in the past or if you are a GM and you recognize that maybe you might be one of those plodding GMs who doesn't move the story forward because you're always saying no or you're quoting rules or you're worried about this or that. There are ways and means to get better. There really are. And it's about practice, but it's also about being honest with your players and letting them know that you are still learning and they will be, they will be kind to you. Hit that uh, subscribe button if you want to see more. Um, maybe not of me ranting about GMs and poor GM status, but um, more videos in general. Leave comments below. Uh, join us on uh, www.greatgamemaster.com for uh, topic suggestions, voting, previous videos, great cool things to buy and all that kind of stuff. And of course you can join us on Patreon where you can either join me in a weekly game or have one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, if you feel that there is value there for you. So until next time, I wish you the very happiest, fairest and politest and nicest of gaming.